Hi, welcome to Rocket Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Coming up on the show today, I'm doing female fronted hard rock and metal from the 80s, part six. So um, when I first started doing this series, I didn't think I'd actually get up to part six, but turns out I've got quite a bit in my collection that's female fronted. So um, let's get on with it. Yeah, so um, and also when I say from the 80s, um, there's actually some from the 90s as well, or early 90s. But um, and this is a good example. So first up, this is a band called Skoo Siskin, a uh, German band. Uh, I think they formed around 1990, and um, this album came out in 92 on um, on the Giant label. Um, interesting cover art. I don't think you'd look at this necessarily. I uh, think straight away this is going to be hard rock or metal. Um, Hugh Syme designed it. Uh, he's not the artist, but he's done the you know cover. Um, art design. Uh, he's quite well known as a um, designer for albums. Um, it's a good album. Um, obviously, coming out in 1992, not the best timing, um, especially for you know this bands with this type of sound. It's kind of um, ACDC influence there. Um, yeah, it's sort of like actually. Uh, the vocalist, uh, her name is Nina C. Ellis, and the, this band, they they kind of sound a little bit like um, what ACDC might sound like if they were female fronted. It's a little bit like that. Um, they've also been compared to um, Motorhead as, uh, as well, and in fact, um, not on this album, but in future on future albums, Lemmy has uh, collaborated with them. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's actually the only album I've got from them, but they have got about six albums. So there's quite a bit out there to, um, check out and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good hard rock album. Um, like I said, uh, 1992, probably not the best time for an album like this to come out, but, um, they did, uh, they, they, there is one music video, um, was released for this album and that's for the song, If the Walls Could Talk. That's probably the best song on the album. Um, other good songs are Living on the Red Line, that uh, opens up track, uh, that opens up side two. That's a good song. Interesting, both those songs, those um, those songs, uh, If the Wars Could Talk and Living on the Red Line, were, the lyrics were actually written by Rick Browdy, who um, is probably best known as a producer, but also produced the first Poison album. So, yeah, he's, so he's, but he's not a producer on this album. He's just helping out with the lyrics on those two songs. Uh, productions by um, the guitarist uh, Jim Box. That's him there. And that's Nina there in the band. Um, yeah, another, another couple of songs on this album I wanted to talk about. Now, there's a song in here called In Another World, which, believe it or not, is over 12 minutes long. And that is just a little bit too long for me. Um, they're not that type of band. They're just like, get in there, rock hard and leave, usually, most of their songs. But there's just a long instrumental part with that with that song. Um, and All Day and All Night is the song that closes the album, which is a cover of the Kink song. But, um, yeah, solid album. Nice to have on vinyl, so it's not an easy one to get on vinyl. And I'm going to play the first single. Um, like I said, there's a music video for this one, and this is If the Walls Could Talk. Really great riff uh, that kicks this one off. Um, so yeah, let's have a listen to this one. You can imagine this could have actually been a hit if it had been those couple years ago. Good riff, drums coming in. Pick out song. There's nothing quite as good as this as the rest of the album, but that's a good song. That's Nina, vocals, which is definitely uh, distinct. Sounds great. Cause I live in the world's good talk, world's good talk, that we 
By the way, if you're wondering about the name Two Siskins, um, when it's translated into English, it means breaking the mood. Okay, coming up next, this is Storm from 1983. Now, this is their second album. I think it's just known as Storm 2. And Jeanette Chase is the vocalist. Um, they've also been uh, described as a female-fronted meatloaf, or a slightly heavier female-fronted meatloaf, which I think is actually not a bad description. Um, definitely Queen is a big influence. You hear that in their sound. And also the sweet. Uh, sweet would uh, be an influence as well. Uh, so it's, it's not that heavy. It's a little bit soft for me, but I do like some of the songs on here. Um, I checked it out because... You know, it's it definitely got some fans. There's people who really like this album. It has been reissued on Rock Candy, um, so you can get that on CD. But um, obviously, as well, quite fairly easy to get on vinyl. Um, standout tracks for me from this album are Settle Down, Running For You, and Pears. But the song I'm going to play is uh, a song called Play With Me. And you can definitely hear the... Um, meatloaf female front meatloaf comparison you could definitely hear on a song like this so uh, it's even got some male vocals coming in as well i'm not sure who does the male vocals uh possibly just um, one of the band members so this is storm from their second album released in 1983 and this is the song play with me pretty much goes straight into the chorus Great vocals. And it sounds great on this. Really good production. Here's the male vocals. It was released on EMI. It was a major label. So this was their final album. Okay, we're going to get a little bit heavier now. This is War Machine from 1986, released on uh, Roadrunner Records. Um, slightly obscure. Now, there's not much uh, with to, not much happening here. On the, the cover's very basic. No picture of the band at all. Uh, released in 86 uh, on Roadrunner and on Neat. Uh, of course, Neat Records quite well known for being one of the labels that really kick-started the new, new wave of British heavy metal. But this is 1986. This is not... A new wave of British heavy metal, but it's definitely metal, um, quite heavy at times, um, yeah, especially for female fronted in the mid 80s. Um, production's not great, I think better production would, would have really helped this album. But uh, cover art's pretty basic, like I said. Um, this is the one and done, so their only album. Uh, Bernadette, Bernadette Mooney is the vocalist, she sounds pretty good, almost a little bit doomy at times. But the riffs are, are quite heavy, some great riffs. In fact, um, my, my, uh, the, the two best songs for me are the, 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 two fir the first two songs on side one. Um, I remember getting this back in the day, back in the, in the sort of mid-80s. And this was pretty heavy for me, because just, just sort of starting out with hard rock and metal and um, had been listening to a lot of the some more of the hair metal bands. So this is obviously a little bit heavier than that. Um, it's not thrash, but it gets a bit thrashy at times. Uh, and like I said, almost um, her vocals are almost a little bit doomy as well. Um, but great musicianship. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. Um, and this is their only album. So I'm going to play you, um, like I said, the first two songs from the album are my favourite. I'm going to play the second track. This is a song called On The Edge. And talking about great riffs, so listen to the riff on this one. Like the squeal at the end.
of the tracks, the songs on these on this album were actually possibly recorded earlier than 86 because of the copyrights. There's 83, 84, 85 new music publications. So they possibly had um, been recording these for a few years. I know they were, they'd got together in the early 80s, but yeah, not released until 86. Okay, next up I'm going to talk about the debut album from the Canadian band Reckless. So it's self-titled, and this came out in 1980. Terrible cover. Um, that's the front. That's the back cover. Um, but I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised by this. Um, it is quite hard to believe that this is the same band. So this is 1984. Definitely looking a lot more metal there. Probably sounding a little bit more metal as well. Um, now, they're not female-fronted here, although it's quite interesting. Um, if you have a look, this is the back cover of the first album. I mean, it could almost be the same people, but that's a guy, and that isn't. Um, <laughs> but that is, um, yeah, that's actually uh, Jan Melanson. Yeah, she's the vocalist on the first album. So for whatever reason, she doesn't stick around for the second album, and um, so this is the second album. They've got a male vocalist in for that one. But, um, and I, I had this album back in the day and really liked it. Uh, didn't really know about the first album. And, you know, I may have even seen this and not even realized it was the same band. But um, that's Steve um, Madden there. So he's sort of, the, he's the guitarist and the band leader. Um, there he is in 84. Um, but, uh, they just put out the two albums, and um, yeah, like I said, I like this album, but actually, I've, this is quite new to me, but I've actually been enjoying this pretty good, uh, especially for 1980. Um, it's heavier than what you might think, um, and uh, I've actually quite liked it. Would have been interesting to see what, what might have happened if Jan had stayed in the band. But um, I'm going to play a, I'm going to play a song from the first album in just a minute. Just one thing I wanted to say too. There's also another band called Reckless. Uh, it can get a bit confusing, can't it? But um, this band uh, they put out an album in 1987 called No Frills. Uh, but it's a different band. This is an American band. It came out on Atlantic in '87, but different band. This is a Cana this the Canadian band Reckless. Um, yeah. And yeah, confusing too, because you wouldn't know really that, I don't think you would anyway, that um, that this and this are the same band. Yeah, that's Steve there, Steve, Steve, but different vocalists. Um, anyway, this song I'm going to play, it's a really good song. It opens up the album and um, like I said, pleasantly surprised by the, how good this was and heavier than what I was expecting too. This is Victims of Time. Good production. Hang out on EMI. Here's by Paul Gross. It's by Paul Gross. Not surprising it sounds good. There's footage on YouTube of um, Reckless playing the song with Jan on vocals. All right, next up, Thunderstick, and this is not an album, this is a four-track EP called Feel Like Rock and Roll. Now, I actually never realized um, back in the day that this was female-fronted, um, but Thunderstick was um, the, formerly the drummer in the band Samson, and he plays drums on here, but he's got... Um, female vocalist. Uh, now the vocalist is actually someone called Anna Marie K 
Carmela Borg. Um, interestingly enough, though, she is not credited. So on the back cover, it says Jodie Valentine. So basically, um, Anna did the recording, uh, but then left the band, and they were about to go off touring, and I guess they decided when we're touring, we're going to have Jodie as our vocalist, so we might as well put her picture on the back. But uh, my understanding is uh, it's actually Anna who is the vocalist on this album, and she sounds fantastic. Great uh, great vocals, actually, on this. Um, there's They have put out an album. They put out an album after this that, that has Jodie on the vocals. I don't have that album, but I'm quite interested in getting it. And then they... That after that album, that was pretty much it. And then they did make a bit of a comeback. Um, sadly, uh, the lead vocalist um, that's pictured here, uh, Jody Valentine, she died in 2016 at the age of 56. Um, and I think that prompted Thunderstick to put out a new album. They got a different vocalist. Um, but yeah, the album after this was called Beauty and the Beast, and that has Jody on uh, vocals. But... Um, the song I'm going to play is a song called Runaround. Very catchy song, and um, yeah, I really like it. So this is Thunderstick and Runaround. Not as heavy as you might have thought. The cover art's quite quite heavy metal looking, but it's more hard rock. Chorus. All right, next up, Cherry Bombs. Now, this is just a four-track EP, um, and they released a three-track EP as well, I think, and then a live album, but no full studio-length uh, album. Um, and I guess um, this band is probably most well-known for the fact that three of the members were uh, once uh, in the band Hanoi Rocks. So Nasty, Andy McCoy, and Terry Chimes, um, who wasn't a member of Hanoi Rocks from the start, but uh, and he's probably more well-known for being the drummer for The Clash. But anyway, those three, um, they're in the band, so formerly from Hanoi Rocks. And the vocalist is Anita uh, Chilama. She's the vocalist. Um, she sounds great, looks good. Um, I'm not quite sure why it didn't quite work out. Um, my understanding is maybe Anita and the the guys in the band didn't get along that well. Um, so Anita had actually been in a pop group prior to um, joining this band, so I'm not sure maybe the mu musically uh, wasn't her thing quite so much. Although you wouldn't know because I've, I've watched um, live clips on YouTube and I think she's seems to be really into it and uh, is doing a great job. But yeah, she was in a band called Toto Coelho, something like that, um, which I'm, I'm not familiar with them. But yeah, so she, she'd had some experience prior to getting, uh, you know, um, getting involved with the Cherry Bombs. Um, yeah, but just the two EPs and then one live album and then that's it. Um, this is the only one, only... Uh, one I've got from them. I haven't got the other EP or the live album, but it's good. I'm interested in uh, definitely checking out um, their other, getting maybe their other EP, maybe the live album. But um, what's interesting about this one, it features a cover of the Lover Boy song Hot Girls in Love, which is a strange choice because they're certainly not the type of band you listen to and you go, oh, it kind of reminds me of Lover Boy. They don't seem to have any Lover Boy influences. They definitely have Hanoi Rocks influences. They've got, you know, like they've got a cool sound. It's a cool original sound. It's hard rock, but it's not generic. Um, so I thought that was an unusual choice there, Loverboy cover. Um, 
they they did actually end up touring with Poison. They opened and toured for Poison. Um, and then that's it. They pretty much, that was the end of it. But you can see clips of them live at the Marquee. Um, I think the whole show pretty much, live at the Marquee. Uh, you can see that on YouTube. We're checking out. Um, yeah, like I said, Anita, um, I think I can understand why they wanted her in their band. She looks fantastic. Sounds great. Um, song's pretty good. Um, and the song I'm going to play is um, a song called Oil and Gasoline. Now, it's not a heavy song, but I really like the way it builds and um, it's just a cool song. So this is the last track on their EP, full track EP. Put oil and gasoline. There are some heavier songs on here. Um, feline, feline, fe feeling um, is uh, yes, yeah, a heavier song, but uh, and a good song. But I'll go with this one. This is oil and gasoline. It's built there really nicely. It's a good live version of this. All right, getting heavier again now. This is Mean Streak and their album Road Call from 1988. Um, now, what's interesting about this uh, band is it's not just female fronted, but the whole band is all female, all female thrash band, which is a little uncommon for the 80s, especially mid 80s. This is 1988, I think this came out. Uh, came out on Music for Nations. Um, yeah. It's pretty good. I'm not, you know, I'm not a huge thrash fan. I don't have a lot of thrash in my collection, but um, uh, definitely a, interesting that it's all female band, and you know, they certainly don't sound anything like Vixen. This is uh, sort of, you know, uh, it's produced by Alex Perellis, and um, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty much, you know, that, that sort of uh, mid late '80s uh, thrash. Um, production's not bad. Um, it's these ladies can certainly play. It sounds pretty good, um, but it's not it's not something um, that, you know that I'm going to play a lot. Um, but I like having it in my collection. Um, it's um, I guess oh, it's one one thing interesting too about this band is that um, three of the members of the band ended up marrying present or former members of the band Dream Theater. So there we go. Um, now this is their only album, but um, they have actually reformed and have started playing live dates recently. So um, that's kind of interesting. So they've actually got back together again and started playing again. Um, but at the stage, just the one album. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play you my favorite song off the album, which is a song called Nostradamus. So Moon Streak and Nostradamus. This just starts off with some nice guitar. Not too heavy at first, but then it builds up. Let's get more freshy. Okay, final one for today is um, a band that's probably not really hard rock or metal, but um, 
that maybe they fit more the the punk rock uh, or pop punk kind of uh, genre, but they look a little hair metal. This is a uh, legal weapon and life sentence to love is the name of the album, and uh, this came out. Uh, this is their major label that de- major label debut came out in 1988 on MCA, and um, I like it. It's yeah, it's definitely it's a rock album. Uh, this is their fourth album. Um, a, bit, a little bit alternative, a little bit of punk. Uh, it's produced, produced by Dave Jordan, who's sort of quite well known um, producer, for, especially for alternative rock bands. Um, vocalist is Cat Arthur. She sounds great. Um, and I, before buying it, I heard a few songs and thought, actually, yeah, it's not hard rock or hair metal, but um, it's, it sounded pretty good, and especially the first side I've been really enjoying. Um, also, when I got this, uh, it was quite cool because it came with a um, press release. So it's got a press release here, which has got some information about the band, um, which has been quite interesting. And uh, also a Polaroid, so like a Polaroid photo of the band. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so like I said, I heard a few songs before getting it and thought, yeah, I'm going to check this out. So. Uh, I'm going to play a, a song called Skate, S-K-8, uh, and Skateboard. Um, I don't think this was the first single. I think it possibly should have been. A, it's a really good song, quite upbeat. Um, I don't know, lyrically perhaps it isn't, but um actually puts me in a good mood when I hear this song, so I've been really enjoying putting this one on. It's the first song on the album. Sounds good. Yeah, it's just quite a beat. Other good songs on this album that I like are Just Like a Rose and Kiss It Tomorrow Goodbye. Good songs. I think Hurt was the first song. Not so much musically, but both ways. Like I said, this was their fourth album. Don't think there's much after this album. Okay, well that's going to do it for today. Um, I think I've played uh, eight songs from eight different bands, all female fronted. Uh, and so that's the end of part six of female fronted hard rock and metal from the 80s and of course some from the early 90s as well hope you enjoyed that um feel free to comment subscribe if you haven't hit that thumbs up button and um i'll be back with some new episodes very soon all right thanks for watching see ya